All right, everyone, the Washington Post has officially come out and uh, declined to advocate the concept of the First Amendment. The Richard Stengel, or Stengel, or I wouldn't know how it's pronounced, saying we need a hate speech uh, clause in the First Amendment. Now, first, the, the legitimacy of a claim that we should do that becomes a lot less when you realize the hurdles involved in passing a constitutional amendment or amending an existing part of the Constitution. If you actually wanted to change the First Amendment, which in spirit is specifically designed to protect what is now called hate speech, among other things, it's meant to protect what is taboo, wrong, what is often considered objectively wrong during an era. It's literally the only purpose of the First Amendment at all. The idea of actually inserting a clause into it to destroy the philosophical underpinning, which is that government and other moral arbiters shouldn't police speech at all. It's a terrible idea to have any form of suppression. Uh, it's really interesting that it come from the Washington Post specifically, because the Washington Post, aren't they being sued for defamation as of a few days ago by the Covington kids? The case getting uh, reversed again. Uh, and by the way, I was actually wrong. Little retraction here. It wasn't a higher court that reversed the decision of a lower court involved with that. It was the same judge, apparently, is saying prior that it would be dismissed and on appeal, he's like, okay, I'll, I guess I'll allow it. You can go to the finding phase. Uh, so the Washington Post is being actively sued uh, for defamation. They're already being sued for what would constitute in the here and now criminal form of speech, which is that they failed to apologize and did material damage after lying about a group of children. It's not a good look for them. There's a reason that the Washington Post is largely not trusted. And it's things like this. When you have people whose job it is specifically to interact as the press under the First Amendment, under the auspices of that amendment, when they are the ones advocating for destroying that First Amendment through any form of exception or clause, that's a danger sign. We need to be very wary of any call at any time to change any, far, any part of the Constitution anyway. That's an intrinsic, though, underpinning of the entire country. All of the other amendments are secondary to the first. When you think about it, everything is subjugated to the ability to express oneself freely. Everything else is totally subjugated to it. The only kind of exception is the concept of self-defense under the Second Amendment to ensure that the First Amendment is respected. But the First Amendment is also an underpinning of the Second. The very idea of people as free agents to be able to be individuals and do what they want is fundamentally done away with and completely endangered and basically goes extinct if you begin tampering with people's ability to express themselves. You also inevitably cause a bottling up of rage that can cause violence, actual physical violence. If a person is shouting, tendency is the catharsis that that causes prevents further potential atrocity. If you say to somebody, though, you're not allowed to have a form of catharsis for what you believe in because it's unacceptable in society, not just taboo, but we're going to ban it outright, they're still thinking it, they're just not saying it. They may act out in other ways. This could literally cause violence if acted upon. And shame on the Washington Post, by the way, is supposedly a legitimate journalistic outlet fighting against the same constitutional amendment that enshrines the press. By the way, the press, not a corporate press, not a, not a press pool, a group of people with a piece of paper that says, I can walk into the White House briefing room with a camera. No, the press is in the manual printing press. Any activity of the press by any person in the population, like, I remember years ago, I think it was Diane Feinstein, if I remember correctly. She came out and said, well, bloggers should, should be uh, uh, b banned from the activities of the press because they're not really the press. And, of course, people, constitutional scholars, among others, pointed out, of course, you can't do that. It's an empty threat. When the Washington Post, by the way, greenlights an article like this, the only thing they're doing is showing their own ignorance. There's no actual threat to the First Amendment by some WAPO opinion piece. The Washington Post is de declining anyway. The old corporate press that is whining so much about wanting to throttle speech is doing so because it's begging Congress and other groups to prevent their competitors from continuing to destroy them. The Washington Post is terrified by the idea of people like me replacing them. And they really, they should be, because, you know, we are. Uh, the idea that hate speech even exists, by the way, is a myth. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing. It's just a common use term for anything that's found objectionable by society at the time. But what constitutes hateful, or bad, or taboo, 
or, or divisive, whatever moniker you want to give it, would change from time to time. You look at the way people talked and about what and how a hundred years ago, the things that they found acceptable were markedly different. As little as 10 to 15 years ago, it would have been considered obscene to talk about some aspects of gay rights, transgenderism, uh, all sorts of, especially in a romantic sense, all sorts of aspects of life would have been considered totally wrong 10 or 15 years ago. Now they're talked about openly, and it's enshrined as a right to do so, a human right to be able to express those things. The same is true with so-called hate speech. It doesn't exist. The idea that someone would say, hey, race and IQ, uh, hey, I, I disagree with this racial government or something, this component of people, this particular wedge issue, who cares? And at least let them express their opinion, therefore, hopefully, they're not planning to do other things. They've achieved their catharsis. They, they're ranting on the internet. Good. There's the right place for it as opposed to them machining pipe bombs or doing something crazy. That's about all. Peace out.